Hey guys, it's uh, Moses from Mr. Uh, Bonetti, the YouTube channel. Uh, I was on the uh, Facebook uh, group, the Tesla Coils and High Voltage, and we were talking about, uh, uh, as, as usual, uh, flyback transformers and so on, and I had mentioned something about driving an ignition coil, which I have tons of these oil-filled round ignition coils you see here. I have 10 of the ones you see on the table, so I was thinking about driving it using an old flyback core, which I'd done before. Someone asked me if you get any kind of uh, decent arcs out of them, or, uh, and I, I didn't remember what the performance was when I did it, so I figured I'd do it again and make a video on it. Uh, of course, to the left over here, this box over here, you can see I have my uh, trusty old power supply I made out of a small Chinese-made uh, ZVS driver and a very large uh, commercial uh, flyback transformer I bought. Uh, it's an AC flyback transformer. There's no rectification. And if I wanted to drive a, a medium size or a Tesla coil, this thing works beautifully. Uh, if I wanted to drive my uh, eight stage uh, CW multiplier, again, it works beautifully. Don't really need to do this, but I, I, want, I have so many of these, I figured I wanted to see if I could do anything useful with these ignition coils. Uh, so, uh, here we go. Uh, one of the things I found out is that this little uh, boot, this is the high voltage uh, boot on here, uh, doesn't really uh, protect from the high voltage coming out and shorting against these uh, uh, primary terminals. Uh, so that was a problem. I actually saw Corona coming out when I uh, drive this with a ZVS driver. Uh, I thought maybe I could temporarily stop that by a rubbing a thick layer of, uh, wrapping a thick layer of Kapton tape around that and around the uh, leads uh, for the primary. Uh, what happened is, uh, hopefully I can edit it in by the time you guys see this video, but uh, uh, you see the entire thing caught on fire and I don't know if I can get this on camera or not. Let me see if I can get it, but I, uh, I burnt holes in my uh, high voltage boot. Uh, there you can, I think you can see it right there. That's a pretty good size hole. It's a size of a standard, uh, like six penny finishing nail or something like that for those guys in the states. Uh, it's kind of kind of a big hole in there, and uh, another tiny hole on this side, but an actual physical hole you could stick a needle or uh, even a tack through. So it's a. Uh, I wasn't getting that. I was just getting Corona shorting out to the uh, two. Uh, uh, primary terminals uh, until I decided to wrap it with tape and then it caught on fire and you could see uh, it's pre fairly spectacular. I have it on video. I'm going to try to uh, cut it into the end of this video when I edit it later. Um, hopefully you guys can see that. In the meantime, I stuck a piece of, I had this little piece of three quarter inch uh, PVC pipe coupler laying around. I stuck that on there. At some point I'll uh, fill it up with some kind of potting like epoxy or a uh, wax or something like that. I uh, haven't done that now, uh, but I just stuck it on there temporarily. Also, when I initially tried this setup here, I uh, ran it off of a uh, lead acid, a 12 volt lead acid battery, and it drove it pretty well. I did what I never do when I'm playing with my uh, flyback transformers, is I grabbed this wire, and uh, with the 12 volt battery powering it was no problem. Uh, Usually I would grab, uh, usually I use uh, 40, uh, the 40,000 volt high voltage wire that either comes with all TVs or uh, CRT uh, flybacks or a silicon uh, 40,000 volt wire. This is 100,000 volt wire, so I figured I could grab it, which I did. Uh, when I hooked it up to this 24 volt switching power, so it's a 24 volt 10 amp switching power supply. I use it to drive the motor on my quadruple Bonetti machine. I've now borrowed it to drive this ZVS driver. When I hooked it up to that, I went to grab this the entire outer casing, this red casing here on the uh, high voltage wire, uh, had a massive static charge, kind of like I grabbed a piece of PVC tube that had been heavily uh, excited uh, uh, by rubbing it with you know, uh, a towel or something like that. that. That's what it felt like. I got nervous uh, thinking I'm going to get an RF burn or something like that. I went and I grabbed it like I usually grab my uh, leads from my flyback transformer when I'm playing with it with this uh, insulated uh, Lyman pliers. As soon as the metal from the Lyman pliers touched the outside of that uh, red insulation there, you could hear the high-pitched squeal, the, uh, 
the uh, flyback core that I'm using to drive this whole thing, you could hear that uh, the frequency of that lower, uh, the audible frequency lower quite a bit. So uh, it's definitely something happening. Uh, I don't know if it was actually high voltage getting out of there or just things charging up like the, uh, in, if you've ever grabbed a uh, PVC pipe uh, um, uh, Leyden jar where the uh, outer foil is not as long as the inner foil and it's all, and, and you've just discharged the whole thing. The piece of the, uh, the, the the portion of the outer plastic of your PVC pipe uh, where you have you have actual foil inside but you don't have it on the outside going all the way up the same length will have a massive static electric charge on it that sort of felt something like that uh, uh, again I don't know if I'm making enough high voltage to uh, to make it through a hundred thousand volt high voltage wire like this is but uh, you're getting some kind of weird capacitance effect nonetheless uh, and when I turn it on, you could you could hear that uh, Corona I'm talking about uh, probably audibly on the camera, leaking through uh, the high voltage boot uh, and hitting uh, the low voltage terminals on my um, on my primary. But uh, we're still going to run this. I'm going to still show you what I'm going to get out of it. Let me show you the setup first. So here's my little Chinese uh, standard generic Chinese uh, ZVS driver, uh, and it. You see here on the left, I have a very large uh, flyback core. You don't need one that large. I just have that laying around. Uh, on one side, you have your typical uh, center tap 5 and 5 turn uh, coil. You need that because you need the center tap of your ZVS driver. Uh, that's what your ZV stands for in ZVS, zero voltage switching. Uh, when your AC cycle reaches zero here, it turns off your MOSFET. So without this uh, third leg, you can't drive anything and of course I don't have a third leg on my uh, primary to my ignition coil so what I do is I wrap my standard 5.5 center tap coil here and on this side I wrap a 10 turn coil no center tap uh, and just hook it up to the primary of my uh, of my ignition coil so you're getting uh, only a one to one ratio you're not getting any kind of step up you're just getting the output of your uh, ZVS driver transferred to the other side uh, I have a little tiny 100 nanofarad, uh, 250 volt, uh, actually it's a 400 volt, uh, 100 nanofarad uh, metal, metalized film capacitor over there. Uh, I was trying to match the resonance frequency of my primary, of my ignition coil with the secondary. Uh, that is the uh, roughly the right uh, capacity used to do that if you don't take into account that you've got this uh, coil uh, in, in parallel, connected in parallel with the, uh, uh, the primary of your ignition coil, that drastically lowers the, uh, the inductance of the coil. As uh, those of you that know, when you connect two, uh, uh, you connect two inductors in parallel, uh, the new inductance becomes one over the reciprocal of the sum of the inductances, so it decreases. Same way that uh, when you uh, connect two uh, uh, resistors in parallel, the, it reduces the resistance. Uh, unlike a capacitor, which is exactly the opposite in series, it uh, lowers the capacitance in the same way that these things lower the inductance when they're in parallel. So that being said, you don't need this. It'll work fine without this. Uh, if I use the capacitance I calculated to make the, the primary and the secondary uh, matched uh, resonance, uh, it says I need because of this that I need uh, three uh, microfarads. I tried that, the thing doesn't run at all. It runs fine without this, but it seems to have a slight bit more current with this, so I have it on there now, but again, it's not necessary. Uh, and enough of that. Uh, let's watch and see what kind of arcs we can get out of it. You get pretty powerful arcs, but nowhere near the flaming arc you would see out of uh, a flyback driven by a ZVS, but uh, still a pretty good arc and probably good enough to run like a uh, you know, uh, maybe a 12-inch, 3-inch uh, diameter Tesla coil or something like that would probably run just fine. Uh, and for other high-voltage experiments, it run fine. Also, I have another power supply. I have a 24-volt, 20-amp also. I'll probably hook up next. And I do have a Variac, which I could rectify And uh, when I get my setup a little more safe. I don't want to start playing with that as a driver for my ZBS until I have... Uh, I set this up a little more safely because uh, things could get dangerous at that point. 
I also want to figure out how to pot the high voltage boot of this uh, because I'm definitely going to uh, uh, turn it to toast if, uh, if it's not well potted down there. Anyway, here goes. Let's see what we can get out of it. Again, this is the ZVS driver is uh, 12 to 30 volts input DC. I'm feeding it uh, uh, 24 volts off uh, this switching power supply, 24 volts at a maximum of 10 amps. Uh, I should have my clamp meter here to show you what the uh, current draw is, but maybe that'll be in the next part of the video. So now it's on. You can hear the high-pitched squeal coming from the uh, flyback core. You can also hear uh, that corona I said that's coming out uh, of the high voltage boot and hitting one of the uh, terminals of my uh, of my uh, primary on my uh, transformer. Anyway, here's the ground. I'm gonna bring it. and there are my arcs. Let's see if we're getting that on film well. Let me move the camera to this side. Maybe you can see it better here. So it's got some current to it, but it's not that flaming sort of arc you can get out when you uh, ZVS drive a uh, a standard flyback transformer. Of course, you're seeing uh, you're seeing flames every time it's burning up the insulation on this little uh, alligator clip lead and I have to be careful it doesn't burn the uh, PVC which it's done before because burning PVC as everybody knows is a carcinogen but, and uh, you know it's probably it's probably PVC the casing on my wire too so I'm sure good thing I have my balcony door open back there and got pretty good ventilation in here but again that's the arcs you get out of it pretty nice arc you can draw but not quite the kind of current you get out of a ZVS driven flyback transformer, but we're gonna, like I said, once I figure out how to pot that high voltage boot better, uh, we're gonna really crank up the current going to the ZVS driver and see if we can improve that. I also might play around and see if I can match my uh, primary and my secondary inductance better, but uh, so far it doesn't seem to improve it when I do that. And I mean my resonance frequency of my primary and my secondary on my uh, transformer. So those are the arcs we get. Definitely hot enough to start things on fire, but not your flaming uh, flyback arc.